Ja, hallo, hallo, willkommen. Wir sind hier mit Delete heute Abend und ja, wir fangen mal mit der ersten Frage an. Uh, hi Delete, uh, welcome. It's an honor having you here in Germany, in Hamburg, especially on the Raw District. Um, and the first question is, uh, is this the first time being in Germany? Firstly, thanks for having me guys, it's been great. Uh, I really enjoyed the party. It was, um, yeah, really fun. The crowd was awesome. And um, yeah, so thanks for that. Uh, to answer your question, it's my first time playing properly in Germany. It's my first time visiting Hamburg and playing here, but also my proper first German gig. I played Cubase before, but as we said before, it doesn't really count because it's like, almost like, a, you know, it's just across the border and it's just a big festival, so it's, it's yeah. I played at Club Zark, which is also just across the border. Mm -hmm. But the, in the middle of Germany, this is definitely, yeah, you know, the first. So it's been really, yeah, it's been really fun. So um, when I heard that you are originally from the from Australia, yeah, I always ask myself, why did you move from Australia to the Netherlands? You know, it's one of the most common questions I get asked. Um, but yeah, why did I do it? Basically, for the music. Uh, I'm really passionate about hard style and it's it's been my life. People maybe not realize, but I, I've actually been producing and DJing hard style for about 10 years and I was always really underground in Australia. Um, I had a really underground following, but I wasn't really anyone that anyone had heard of. Um, and then I eventually got booked for Loudness um, in, in Holland in 2012. And, um, I came and I played and the, the crowd was just insane, it just, I was just so hooked, I'm like wow, I need to be here, you know, and um, I got a working holiday visa, so I could uh, live in Holland for a year, which is really easy to get, so, and I didn't really have anything in Australia at the time, like, um, I uh, had a really shitty job that I just quit, and I was single, um, you know, I didn't have any commitments that I was tied down to, so I thought, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna just move, I'm gonna give it a go. And although it was a slow start, I'm really glad I did it because it's, it's paid off. Is there anything in particular uh, when you came to Europe that is totally different, that was totally new to you, uh, as like things are being treated, uh, treated in Australia? The first thing that comes to mind is the weather. Okay, when I first landed in Holland in 2012 for loudness that I mentioned before, snow everywhere. <laughs> And I'd never seen snow before, so I was like, what the fuck is this white shit? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was different because, yeah, in Australia, it's known to be a warmer country. Uh, so there is snow in some parts, but, yeah, mostly not. And I never really visited those parts of Australia. So the weather, but, yeah, there's a lot of cultural things that are different. Like the food, for example, is also different. Um, I really love the, the Dutch food, all the greasy, you know, like the frikandel and, and stuff like that. And I, in Germany, you also have uh, similar stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it's cool, but also I think also the history of, of the country, also in Germany as well, um, but in Europe in, in general, um, there's so much history. So the buildings, the architecture, it's really cool for me because Australia's only, yeah, it was civilized in the 1700s, so it's, it's It's pretty new, um, but yeah, Europe's been around a lot longer, so there's so much history, and I find that really cool, and I still like to visit other uh, cities around Europe and and just uh, yeah, soak in all the uh, all the history. So, for you being here in Europe, uh, what do you do in your spare time? You know, to relax, to free your mind. Is there anything in particular? I don't get much spare time. I think when. When you're a producer and an artist, a DJ, um, trying to make it, um, you know, and make a living out of it, because it's my, my living now, you don't really get much spare time because you've got to, you know, you've got to keep at it. You've really got to absorb yourself into it. So I, I'm in the studio, you know, 14 hours a day, and then I might just chill with my girlfriend for the last hour or two of the day, and that's it. That's that's kind of my life. Even and then on weekends, it's gigs and trying to catch up on sleep and stuff. But when I do get some spare time, I like to play some PS4, or yeah, or, or um, yeah, um, just uh, chill with my girlfriend. Uh, yeah, try to fit in, catching up with friends, which I, I'm guilty I haven't been able to do much lately. <laughs> But yeah, 
Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I watch movies as well. I'm a big movie fan, big gaming and movie fan. So th- those two things, I like to really try to do them as much as possible in my spare time. But yeah, I need to, I need to make more spare time. <laughs> <lacht> so, ich glaube, als nächstes fragen wir immer, ob er vielleicht ein bisschen aus dem Nähkästchen plaudern möchte, was das Thema Delete selber angeht. Um, coming back to Delete itself, a project. Um, is there something you could share with us, with the fans here in Germany, what to expect in the near future? Yep. Um, for, for this year particularly, I'm just focusing on pushing my productions and, and uh, especially my new live act, Delete VIP. Um, I've got a lot of uh, big bookings this year, so I'm going to be pushing that a lot because uh, I'm basically creating new content exclusively for the live act. So it's almost like I'm making music for you know a second act basically. So uh, these are the this kind of stuff I'm not playing in my normal set. So now I've basically got all this extra work to do, which is cool. Uh, I want to do that, but it's it's taking a lot of my time. Um, But uh, in, the, in the future, future, of course, I want to try new things. There's rumors of me maybe uh, doing an album, but I'm going to leave it at it is a rumor. I will, uh, of course, it's every artist's dream to do an album, and I will always want to do one in the future. But whether it's going to be next year or the year after, I'm not 100 sure yet. But uh, I just want to really develop more as an artist, um, and just yeah. I've got a lot of momentum at the moment, I just want to keep that up and see where it goes. But yeah, next year, who knows. But for now, it's just concentrating on Delete VIP and, and Delete, of course, and pushing myself and with all the gigs that are coming through, all the releases that are coming through. And then um, for next year, I definitely will probably want to take the next uh, challenge. So what that is, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> What's crucial for you that you say that the party was amazing, it was a great party. Yep. Um, it's all about the vibe, I think. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter about the size. It doesn't really matter about um, you know fancy decorations or anything like that. I think as long as the vibe is good, then the party is awesome. Like yeah, of course, things like the sound need to be good, but as long as pe- as long as the, the fans are happy with the sound, then I'm happy, you know. And I think if they're looking like they're having a great time, then then you know they are, and so I am. So. That's really all it takes for me, a good vibe, and then I'm happy. We received a lot of questions uh, on Facebook uh, concerning the, um, the, the big question, do you ever take off your cap? <laughs> I, I sleep in my cap, I, I shower in it, no, 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 it's always been, um, when I started DJing like, yeah, years and years ago, I always wore a trucker cap and it just became my thing. But um, I am actually going bald almost. You can have a little bit of a sneak peek. But um, <laughs> so people are always like, what is under the, the hat? And all I can say is not much. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's not like, it's not because I'm ashamed of it or something. It's just because it's it's always been my um, thing when I, when I DJ. If I go out doing groceries or something like that, I don't even really wear it. Like I don't really care too much. But uh, for, for me as the lead and me as, an artist, I can't be seen without my cap because people wouldn't recognize me. So it's just become a thing and I, I love caps, I'm, I'm especially the, the trucker style cap. You know, everyone wears snapbacks, but I've always wore trucker caps and I'm just really, yeah, I just really like them. So uh, yeah, but yeah, will people see me without a cap, you know, maybe in the future. I always thought maybe I'll do a randy and shave my head completely and um, Yeah, in Australia we've got like this cancer, um, uh, it's like a, 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 how do you say it, it's like a, a, well there's a foundation for cancer, but there's a special uh, thing that people do is where they shave their heads yeah. for it, and I thought about maybe I could do that in the future, but yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I, yeah, it's hard for me to part without my cap. How do you many your own? Do you have a broad collection? Uh, yeah, well I used to... Um, where uh, very, very simple trucker caps, they're really, they're, they're quite cheap, but I really like them because they're plain, and they're the, the beach field truck caps, and you can order them from all these different stores and get your own designs put on them. And um, I just like them because you can get them in pretty much any color. And I had a heap of them, but I found uh, these ones, uh, Daejin's, and they are, I think they're German actually. 
I'm pretty sure they're German. And um, they're fucking awesome. I love them. I've got about seven, six or seven of these now. And um, I'll be buying a lot more because, um, yeah, they, they just come in all different colors and they're cool. And underneath the, uh, the brim, they have different designs. And yes. I just like the, the fit of them. So um, I've, I've, I've only recently gotten the addiction of them. So I think I'm going to have a big collection soon. And we just received a very funny uh, comment on Facebook from Malin. Um, she said, um, would he marry me? Uh, this is a picture, you know? Um, and she says, um, she was down there in the crowd showing this card. Yeah, okay, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And you saw her and you made it back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think, I think I've committed now, haven't I, with the, with the love part thing. But to be, to be fair, I did see even, even guys doing that, and I was doing that back to the guys. So. <laughs> But, um, Well, unfortunately, no, I can't marry her. The, 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 it would be great, but I'm, I've got a girlfriend and I'm happy with her. But uh, yeah, of course, I love my fans in a different way. So uh, on a f yeah, in a fan kind of way, we can get married. But because, <laughs> you know, it's like music marriage, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm connected with all my fans on a, on a weird musical level. Yeah. But um, yeah, and so uh, I can share my love for my fans in that kind of way. I'm coming to the last question. Um, is there anything special you would like to say to your, especially German fans out there? Yes, uh, to all my German fans, you're, you're, you are awesome. Uh, here in Hamburg you're awesome, but all across Germany, if you weren't here tonight, I'm also shouting out to you. Thank you for the support over the years. I know a lot of you come to my gigs in Holland, like especially the big ones. I saw quite a few of you at Hard Base and the Supremacy and those events. And um, I'm sure I'll see you more in the future, but just thank you for the support. And yeah, if it, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here tonight. And I probably wouldn't be um, getting other gigs across the world. So uh, thank you guys. And I hope to be back here in Germany again soon. Thank you.